please give a round of applause to managing partner at Rockaway X, Victor Fischer. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, third day, huh? Um, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank basically all of you coming to Prague and also the whole Rockaway X team of, uh, you know, 37 people for pulling this together. I know it was, you know, Samantha and Tomasz and Dagmar and everyone. It was not easy, you know, in bear market to pull together, you know, 535 people and discuss uh, Cosmos ecosystem. Um, and um, so I decided to start my talk on a lighter note, yeah? So let me give you a small uh, personal story. So when I was finishing university, always wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I said to a friend of mine, hey, let's, let's do a company together. And he was like a rock star programmer. I also studied programming, but it was very bad, so he was actually doing the stuff, and I tried to sell it. And he programmed like a very precise fingerprint recognition algorithm. We actually, he, we actually won a couple of competitions uh, globally. And, so, and then I said, okay, let's create an SDK out of it. So, so we created an SDK, I put up a website, and then one week later, nobody bought it. Two weeks later, nobody bought it. You know, two months later, still nobody bought it. And actually, it was amazing technology, but we realized that our revenues were dependent on the third parties, the other developers, and their ability to program their application, but also their ability to sell. So that's, that's where we realized how difficult it is to sell an SDK. Two years later, we actually realized that there was a problem in Africa. So in Africa, people don't have identity. You know, they are born and they don't have an ID card, but still, you want to have democracy, you want to have elections. And so, what they typically did in Africa is that they went to vote, and once they voted, they made them put their fingers in ink. And that showed that they had already voted. But the, wing, the, the ink was actually, uh, you know, you could erase it with sand. And so we realized there was an opportunity to create fingerprint recognition systems, which would identify the people automatically on the fly and eliminate duplicates at the same time as they were voting. These systems actually existed. Those were called AFIS, Automated Fingerprint Identification Systems. And Sajem was the market leader. They were selling one system like this for $1 per person in a database. And so we created actually the fastest fingerprint recognition algorithm. It was running on a no notebook. We did like 100,000 transactions per second. And this was then implemented to Mozambique, uh, Lesotho, and other countries in Africa. And we actually did the full product. We didn't do just the SDK. And that's when I realized that actually, when you go the full product, you get much, you get much faster the, the consumer traction. The green button, yeah? Green button. OK. And so, so then what inspired me for this talk is uh, this Zaki's quote. Yeah? Uh, the hour is late. We have to do something because like, everybody's catching us on the, on, on, on the Cosmos technology. And actually, Cosmos is an amazing technology. You know, I was just impressed what Josh presented on shared sequencers, you know, Agoric, what they are doing with hardened JavaScript, and also you know, the modularity and the sovereignty, ability to have your app chain, privacy, so, so much stuff going on in Cosmos. It's just amazing technology. That's why you know, 74 chains are actually built uh, today, maybe even more, using like Cosmos SDK or on Cosmos, covering all different kinds of use cases. But let's take a look at traction. So this is just a screenshot from CoinMarketCap. All the Cosmos chains total approximately $1 uh, billion dollars of $10 billion of, uh, of market cap, which is less than 1% of the overall crypto market cap of 1.1 trillion currently. But this is just the price, like we don't care about price. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about traction. Daily active addresses. I just took the top chains here on Cosmos and it's around 40,000 per day. Overall, all blockchains, including Tron and Binance Smart Chain, is 4 million. So again, we are approximately at 1% of the overall daily active users. How about transactions? Transactions on chain, Cosmos, approximately 1 million, out of a total of 40 million, actually driven by Accelar. Accelar one month ago was around 100K daily, daily transactions, right now is an, around 500. So, so this actually helped all the Cosmos ecosystem to achieve on this metric 2.5%. Yeah, Dean, you agree? <laughs> and uh, 
Let's take a look at, uh, at TVL. Like everybody knows, like TVL, 47 billion, but mainly driven by Ethereum ecosystem. If you look at all the L2s, it's actually like 90, 80, 90% Ethereum. In Cosmos, we have roughly 1 billion, so it's 2%. Again, we are around 1%, 2% of the overall crypto. Yeah? So when we say there is no traction in crypto, I disagree. There is some. There is no traction in Cosmos. I agree with that because it's 1% of actually already the small crypto market. Same on DEX volumes. So overall, 1.8 billion DEX volumes over, this is daily, yeah? And Osmos is 7.7 .7 million, so 0.5%. Again, like, you know, between 0.5, 1 to 2%. Stables, we don't have stables. But, you know, we talked about it over the three days a lot. So USDC, IST, of course, are coming. So hopefully this will go back up. And then I listen to some of the panels, and I hear, like, different kind of, like, hypotheses for, uh, like, what, what's actually going on? Why we don't get so much traction, Cosmos as an ecosystem, you know? Is it the tech? No, like, Zaki is saying, like, do we need to invent something more? Is it, like, the lack of liquidity because, you know, we don't have TVL? Is it the lack of institutional support because we don't have MetaMask, we don't have custody? Is it the fact that we are lacking stablecoin or, or is it the distribution? And uh, so I decided to ask an expert. Can you please play the video? Ten billion dollars a product a year. And one of the things I've always found is that you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. You can't start with the technology and try to figure out where you're going to try to sell it. And I've made this mistake probably more than anybody else in this room. And I've got the scar tissue to prove it. And I know that it's the case. And as we have tried to <clears throat> come up with a strategy and a vision for Apple, um, it started with what incredible benefits can we give to the customer? Where can we take the customer? Not, not starting with, let's sit down with the engineers and, and figure out what awesome technology we have, and then how are we going to market that? All right, thank you. And so, uh, thanks, Anar, for agreeing with uh, the expert, yeah? So, um, this was, uh, actually, I don't know, nine, yeah, 92? 1998, yeah. So, it's actually, it's actually a good segue to this slide, because I'm thinking like, okay, so where are the users that we can actually onboard into crypto, and where do you start? You have to, I think you have to start with the internet because like, you cannot use crypto without the internet. And so, internet was invented into 1983 with the, like, the TCP IP that's kind of like everybody agrees on. And then, like, I started to use it in 1993 maybe, you know, with Gopher and IRC, like um, Mosaic was still not around. And I just loved it, yeah? But it was only, it was read-only. You could actually, then once, once Netscape was invented, like we could do forms, so I could like input some data and that's it. But it was not a read-write web. And actually, very interestingly, I think like this, like the adoption of internet for me indicates how I think crypto has been growing and will grow. Bitcoin is read only. Yeah? And then with the invention of JavaScript in the 1990s, we started to have this like read and write internet. And, uh, and I think that's the, that's the Ethereum. Yeah? But like even in the internet, like every cycle is 10 years. Yeah? 10 years read only. I still remember I was studying my high school in the US. We actually got the CDs from America Online to be, to be put online, yeah? So, like, and it was just a hassle. You had to have a modem and, you know, you, you went like maybe 256 kilos. So it's like, it was, it was such a hassle to get online back then, like it is to get into crypto today with fiat on ramps. And so, with the read write web, what it actually allowed is, you know, you could now write blocks and you could now like tag your friends and you could now start a discussion online and that's what kicked in the new wave of social web i think this is still to come in crypto i think it will be the new wave of creator economy i think it's once everyone is a creator that's what's dri that's what go what's going to drive the next growth and then the fourth one in the internet was mobile and i think we are still to see this one so i think in 20 years from now once we have you know cosmos gateway uh, 20 53, <laughs> then, uh, you know, we'll be 
uh, we'll know what, what would happen. But, but the internet actually, as it grew, it still has two problems even today. Number one, it's missing a financial layer. So to make a transaction on the internet, you have to put your credit card you know, with a, the CCV number. It's not secure. It goes through four banks, like every bank takes a fee. Why we ju the, just don't have the native financial layer on the internet? Number one. And number two, how do you show that you actually... So a fundamental human need is to belong to a society and then have a status within that society. In the real world, you know, you do it with Ferraris and Louis Vuitton bags. But on the internet, you don't have means to do this because, you know, the picture of your Ferrari could be a picture of that you just downloaded on the internet from someone else. The only way how to show this is uh, basically blockchain, crypto, or NFTs. And so let's focus on those one by one and let's, you know, talk about some examples where I think Cosmos should focus more. So number one is the financial layer and the potential. Even the overall crypto is super small, 1.1 trillion market cap, still super small compared to, uh, you know, all the other financial um, services and products which are out there, which are in terms of derivatives, it's 600 billion trillion dollars. In terms of uh, debt, it's, it's 300 trillion dollars. So the market that we could attack is really, really big, number one. And, but we can see that, that already crypto, the apps have been addressing this market and these financial needs. So for example, payments, we have some payments in Cosmos ecosystem, also e-money. I don't think it has much traction. I looked yesterday, NGM token is about, I think, one or, or five million market cap. So, so I think we could still improve there. Uh, swaps, lending, yield. I think what Terra really brought into the Cosmos ecosystem, as Sunny said, was traction, was yield. We were able to get 20% yield through Anchor, but you could use it only if you used UST as a stablecoin. And that's what actually drove a lot of users and a lot of liquidity into the ecosystem. So I think we need another yield generating protocols. And I'm excited about you know, what uh, 42 are doing, for example. Uh, Adam from Rockaway X also has some ideas. I don't know where he is. Yeah, but he's hiding back there. So you could also talk to him. And then I agree with Sam from the panel we had earlier today. Real world assets and bringing them on chain is, is what I think will bring additional, um, additional traction. So let's, let's talk about some examples. Uh, so disclaimer, we invested into Helio at the beginning of the year. It's just a payment platform. Super simple to use. You know, you are doing like a private sale of NFTs. You will use them to actually uh, get payments from all the different like pre-minters, number one. Number two, on Helio, you can create an invoice with one click, send to someone, and they just accept crypto very easily. Stripe is processing $300 billion in uh, yearly payments. Cross-border remittances is around $600 billion yearly. So this is a massive market, which I think uh, um, Web3 solutions could, could attack. Second is um, reinsurance. So the, the, the entire insurance market is around $900 billion, but half of that is reinsurance. So the insurance companies would actually insure something, but then would sell it to reinsurance companies. It's half, yeah? Like the leaders are Swiss Rem, Unigre, but there are also others. Ensuro, I don't know if you know it, Ensuro.co is a platform which is actually reinsuring Koala insurance. Koala Insurance, Koala is a fintech company. They're doing parametric insurance on travel. So it's basically, yes, there was an insurance event. They, you, you want to be reimbursed or no? So parametric means yes or no answer. They're able to, re, to, to reinsure that. Swiss and Munigre are generating around 12 to 14% yearly return. On Koala, you can have 12 to 25% yearly year, year, on Ensuro, you can have 12 to 25% yearly return, depending on which tranche you want to be positioned when you are providing liquidity. Another example is on the finance. You probably all know of this. So when the current bear market happened, we actually lost yield in crypto. Now, what is Aave or Compound? What's the yield on Aave Compound? One or 2% maybe on USDC, maybe three, but it's still far below what US treasuries are providing. Ondo is allowing us to invest on-chain to U.S. Treasuries or on-chain to high-yield fixed income, generating, you know, between 5 to 8 percent. Um, so that's, that's another example. And another example is real estate on-chain. How many of you know Realty? It's been around for a while. 
Yeah, so it's it's a it's a cool platform. I think just since the beginning of this year, they tokenized uh, uh, 30 million worth of of houses. Those houses are mainly in Detroit because the owner, the founders of Realty, they know the the local market, and you are able to generate roughly 20 percent when you invest into such a tokenized uh, house. The minimum investment is around fifty dollars. It runs on Ethereum or, or Gnosis chain, XDAI. But Gnosis Chain is actually much better than Ethereum because then your interest accrues to your wallet automatically. It, uh, they could not implement this on Ethereum. But you know, product-wise, they have uh, for sure improvements to do. So this is another idea which I think would be easily implementable on Cosmos. So that's financial layer, number one. Number two, how about asset ownership? So all of these internet companies, and this is like not my idea, I took this, uh, this slide from A16Z, all of these internet companies are actually extracting fees. So Roblox is charging around 30% when you as a creator create something for, uh, within the game. But Web3, because it's direct, uh, charges much, much less. Now, NFTs already are a huge market. Uh, currently, in the month of May, the trading volume was $700 million. One year ago was $3 billion, went down a bit, but still $700 million, it's not a small market. Compared to trading volume of tokens, trading volume of tokens per month is around $1 trillion. Derivatives, crypto derivatives is $2 trillion. So crypto derivatives $2 trillion, spot $1 trillion, NFTs $1 billion. That's how I think about it, yeah? And uh, NFTs, I think, are an opportunity for Cosmos to also have one of their chains to grow quickly. See here, I don't know if you can read it, but uh, the market collection, which is basically skins uh, on chain, like for video games, has allowed the Mythos chain to be within top five just over the past 30 days. Th this is how we split different asset ownership use cases. This is just one segmentation when we use. We split them into physical world and virtual world. So with the physical world, you can actually engage directly with your fans. If you are, for example, Formula One team like Alpine, Alpine is using NFTs. If you go on CryptoSlam, Alpine fan tokens, I think it's top three currently, trading around $5 million per, per month. Number two, brands are using NFTs to engage directly with their communities, like for example, Nike and their new Swoosh project. Um, you maybe heard about DPIN or decentralized physical infrastructure, projects like HiveMapper, HiveMapper is actually cool because even if you don't have a car, the algorithm gives you a picture of, for example, a stop sign, which the machine learning algorithm of HiveMapper could not read. But then you say, oh, it's a stop sign. And as a result, you help HiveMapper to improve their machine learning model. And as a result of that, you earn honey tokens. So I like that use case. Activity gamification with, uh, I don't know, I'm using Genopets right now or Stepan. Uh, loyalty programs, we'll talk about this uh, later, and also identity linked to events like the POW token. That's, that's the physical world. Number two is virtual world. Gaming already today represents 48% of transactions on chain. So we think that might be another vertical which will, which will drive adoption. I'm looking forward to seeing Cosmos chains also focusing on gaming. Uh, comics, we'll talk about it later. Uh, social networks slash identity on chain. Um, another interesting vertical, and uh, and maybe AI. But let's talk about let's talk about concrete use cases. How many of you know SoRare? Okay, so uh, SoRare is a, is a fantasy football game, but now they're also in ABA and in and um, and in the football league. You actually collect the cards, and then you actually play the fantasy, and you you earn yield in Ethereum. You actually earn like 0 0.16 for ETH when you kind of like win depending on your team versus what, the, what were their real results in the real world. Sora raised $680 million. I'm hearing their annualized revenue is still around $100 million. Second is a loyalty program. How many of you heard about Travala? Yeah, so quite many. So uh, Anara found this use case. And I think, Anara, maybe you travel not, not through bookings.com anymore. You only travel through Travala, no? Because when you book on Travala, so the token has four use cases. Number one, you get a cashback. When you book something through Travala, Travala uses Booking.com, so you have the same prices. But when you book through Travala, you actually get a cashback between three to ten dollars per booking. Um, you probably don't see it here, but you know, feel free to go on Travala.com. You'll see it there. Then uh, 
another one is NFT loyalties. They have NFT NFT lo based loyalty program. The more you use it, the more discounts you get, and and also the community voting on the next features. Uh, Playmakers. How many of you heard about Playmakers? Okay, just a couple. So Playmakers, uh, we invested just recently in the in the seed round, and um, actually many games currently were initially created like mods. So Counter Strike is a mod on Half Life, and uh, people just love when they love a, when they love a game, they love just they love to create something in that game, and we would like a world where they actually get paid for it as well. So this is an example of uh, of a game where one of the players created this character, but that character was uh, he was unable to monetize that character. But through Playmakers, Playmakers is a publishing platform which connects artists or users with the games. And when someone creates something like a uh, like a skin or a new weapon in that game and it's being used, then that platform actually monetizes uh, and uh, and gives the uh, the artist also part of the revenue. So it has two parts of it. Number one is the publishing platform and content monetization platform, and the second part is uh, rewarding the contributions with uh, with the reward token. Another example in the gaming vertical is PlayMint. Uh, PlayMint is a fully on-chain game. You probably heard about it already. Um, it's uh, developed using ZK and um, the skins market is around sixty billion um, dollars worth annually. The and and people just since Ultima Online, people love you know trading in-game items. But currently, if you want to trade an in-game item on Steam, you basically don't really see who has used it before and who won, for example, a game with it in an, like an esports tournament. But through an on-chain game, you would actually have on-chain everything, and then you can you know buy that item show that item in game or monetize that item because everything will be on chain. Uh, third example I want to discuss is a comics uh, book online, Three World Three Moons. Anybody knows about Three World Three Moons? Yeah, so uh, it's a team basically who was creating uh, uh, comic books like Superman, Thor, Star Wars, and they said Distribution of comics books is broken. Comics book is still a $16 billion market annually. They say distribution of comics book is broken because you know it's a central entity, one intermediary, which decides on the story, number one, but number two also distributes and holds the consumer relationship. With the, with the crypto and with NFTs, they are able to allow readers to change the story. So here you can see a screenshot how you as a reader online can actually choose like how will you adopt the storyline, and also you can participate into the experience through NFTs and then through also you know, your character because also your avatar changes, ultimately being able to also earn once you create, participate, and then sell your, uh, your in-game items. So these are just a couple of examples within the financial and the Web3 um, worlds which we are excited about. Uh, I'm sure there is much more, so let's have a discussion after. Ultimately, I would say, I would say the following. Yeah. So, we are born in a communist country, and you are now sitting on the soil of an ex-communist country. And, you know, I was 12 when communism fell, and we were unable to travel. We were unable to send money on board. So, for us, why we are excited about crypto is because ultimately, it helps you to have freedom because. You can have a smartphone and a connection to internet, and you can basically do financial services. You can invest in Apple stock, you can lend, you can borrow, you can send payments. So this is what ultimately really excites us. And this is also what excites us about Cosmos, because Cosmos equals freedom. You know, we have really good privacy, you have the sovereignty, you have the optionality, you have the modularity. Uh, so uh, for us, Cosmos also equals freedom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and we are out of time. <laughs> well, <laughs> we do, but we don't have any questions. So I think... Uh, no questions. No questions. Okay, no. <laughs> so either nobody understood or everybody understood. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah. All right. So maybe if you can go to the microphone uh, so, you know, people in the stream can also hear you. It's uh, over there. Uh, yes, perfect. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, you should see it. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Victor. Uh, nice one. Loved it. Uh, Hi. Two things. Can we get a copy of this presentation? Second one is you spoke extensively about real-world assets, uh, specifically uh, real estate. And one of the other examples which is common is trade finance, invoice discounting, bill discounting. So those kind of dApps getting built. But that kind of relies heavily on Web2 adoption. So for example, merchants will need to be familiar with crypto wallets, et cetera. For, and there are protocols like Polytrade or Credify who are already building on RW, uh, you know, uh, RWA protocols, but struggling to find kind of traction. So again, real estate, you pointed out, it's a highly localized game. Unless you have uh, contacts with authorities, uh, you know, local authorities, it is pretty much impossible to, you know, do these kind of tokenization examples, the one that you sh yeah. showed. So from your experience, how do you think these hurdles can be bridged? Yeah, I think so. Of course, you can have a presentation. We'll probably just send it around. Uh, and actually, I think it could can be also like downloaded on YouTube. This video will be able to be seen. Yes. Second, like, in, look, we invested into like real world assets since like many years ago, like Centrifuge. And, you know, we've been using Maple and Credix through our credit fund. And, you know, this just takes time. This just, it really takes time to onboard real world assets because you know, for every house, you have to create an SPV because you have to be linked to the real, to the real world. But I think, you know, we just have to work through this and, um, and the real world, I don't think it will accelerate. I think we just, you know, like Realty guys, for example, they are really, it's two brothers. One of them is really there in the US, in Detroit, kind of like sourcing these houses, yeah? How it can scale? It can scale through leveraging other platforms who have already onboarded these, these real world assets. So it's, that's what I think. I think in the future we'll have the combination of, you know, those kind of like older platforms onboarding those, the traditional, and then us, you know, bring it on chain, monetize it, compo you know, in a composable way, being able to borrow and lend against it, for example. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll take this. Thanks.